worked with 30-somethings, or now 40-somethings, um, that I thought added just such great suspense and zest and, and precious archival footage. And I couldn't be more pleased with the product. It took us five years. Those folks most worked, many of them, as volunteers. Uh, you know, had their day jobs. Uh, so what we hope to do with this film is to, one, right now today it's being shown on TV to millennials, uh, to, as part of the Rock the Vote effort, and we're very pleased about that. And we hope it serves as an inspiration to young people to know that you work hard and you keep at it and you get kicked in the teeth and you get up again and you can get things done. Yes. And you know, there's nothing more important than changing the law and then making sure it's enforced. And I, I'm sorry my other sisters aren't here. You can tell we made a remarkable combo together and um, we're able to achieve, I think, wonderful things. There's a whole aspect now this film, by the way, has won eight awards, appeared all over the country, has been shown already in Korea, the right kind of Korea. <laughs> it, it has been shown in Madrid, they're interested in Barcelona, in Prague, in India, the country of India. So we are just pixelated by the result that we have received. Uh, and Geez, you know, no one was in Fort Lauderdale. They wrote us Best Picture, Atlanta, all kinds of places, and on university campuses. So we've cut this film to an hour for educational purposes so that they can be used in universities and high school. And Chris, who will also be, uh, by charming Chris, is still on the hunt because we're looking for money to cut it into 15-minute uh, portions for grade school and up to high school with a lesson plan of questions and answers. California made a law that's being implemented this year that will teach lesbian and gay history from the second grade on. And I know all you guys think you're sophisticated New Yorkers, but man oh man, it's a little bit of bumpkins here. So we have to follow our California lead. So uh, I just it, uh, questions. Chris, my Chris, my partner, always watching out, always watching out right there. My side could not have done this without her love, loyalty, and support. And occasionally, two dollars. Anyone want questions? Or we can talk in the lobby. And... I would like a question. Yes, sir. I I want to speak. I joined the Magazine Society in 1958, and I want to tell you on behalf of Frank Tammany and Barbara Giddings, who gave us who so we saw us marching there at an annual reminder. I want to tell you that when we broke on the radio in 1962, it was a victory. When we first demonstrated for not to be excluded from the military in 1964. It was the first time there had been a gay demonstrating for civil rights when we appeared on TV as homosexuals. And there's a question there, sir? The question is, I want to tell you, that we could not have dreamed, and they're all dead and gone. I don't want to tell you. Oh, sweetheart. Come over here, husband. Come on over here. Come on over here. Yes, sir. Uh, that was Randy Wicker. He came out of a 16-year-old. My question 
question is, how the hell did you stand there and hear those things said? I would have been outraged, and maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. I have to tell you, there are very strong, very different kinds of lesbians up here. And each of you... I don't know the lesbian. I'm pretty sober on that part, but we're different women. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you have a little mm -hmm. bit of a armor mm -hmm. as you develop, and you get uh, a strength or an inner strength you didn't necessarily know you were capable of. And lots of times you see those were spontaneous speeches, not pre written. And I think yeah. together, we four women, we lifted up the Volkswagen, you know. And it brings out another part of one when you're in that assaultive environment. And I want to say, we didn't hate those guys. There's 80 votes a day. We served for them for years. You know, afterwards, a lot of them are from Central Valley and Bakersfield. We tried to get the votes of the Democrats. And that's what the victories were, because they too were conservative and afraid of losing their votes. Uh, but afterwards, anyone who voted against us would bring us bags of peaches and cherries. And I served as appropriations chair, and every bill they did had to come to me. <laughs> ah. But we didn't punish them for that vote, and we developed a great deal of respectability because we read the bills, we knew what they were, we were a good colleague, we arrived on time, we were, we were good to serve with. And, and personally, we were liked. And then it became a Republican-Democratic wedge issue, uh, which didn't always represent sincere feelings that some of those folks were saying. And lastly, that was 20 years ago. Some of those folks ain't around. 20 years later, we have this generation of wonderful new uh, young people who are talking about gender issues on a continuum, and therefore, the world has changed, and I think we served as a bit of a catalyst for that, and we're very proud of it. Thank you very, very much. The Adam and Bob did a talk